Okay, here we go with another Spider Tank 3 video. And up the front here I say warning, the warning has been removed, blah blah blah. And we're always highly educational. Although there is always going to be some people who struggle with the educational aspect of this video. Now in this third episode, we're almost to the point near the end of this episode where the first spiderlings that hatched on the 15th of October, well they're almost four weeks old. The spiderlings that hatched from egg sac 7, that was on the 21st of October, well they're only going to be a couple of weeks old in this video. And in this episode we will marvel at seeing egg sac 8 hatch, now that got laid up on the 13th of September, but hatches on the 8th of November. So that's just shy of two months from the time between it was laid up versus the time it hatches. So in this episode here, we are going to start to witness what I'm calling the tipping point of the spider tank. There's two divides in the spider tank. There are the spiderlings that have stayed up near the hatching area. And then there are the other spiderlings who are setting up homes, webs, whatnot, down in the lower section of the spider tank. I could almost describe it like this. There are the very passive spiderlings and then there are the other ones who are very active and very aggressive. There's a lot of time lapse footage taken of the spider tank. The camera runs 24 7 and there's moments in here that we're going to have a very careful look at and just see how the spiders are behaving. And remember spider tank 3 is different to the previous spider tanks. There is no food introduced into the spider tank. The only meal a spiderling can get is by eating little brother or sister. There is a small bowl of water in the corner of the spider tank. I'm going to break this down into a series of events that the time lapse camera has captured. There's a group of spiderlings just underneath the metal rings inside the spider tank and they've all got their own little zone. They've all got drop down lines going to the bottom of the spider tank very much like the way a mature redback operates. But you'll see these interactions between spiderlings. Now I'm not sure whether these are friendly interactions or they are hostile but what I observe is the spiderlings don't tend to hang out too close to each other. They seem to be fairly wary of each other. I call these argy bargy moments. There's lots of these that go on, but sometimes these little conflicts can turn into a death match. And when it turns nasty, it turns nasty extremely fast. Okay, this is looking at the bottom of the spider tank. This is where the nasty redbacks are hanging out. This gets very complicated. I'll put red circles around areas where you need to see. I'll also move my watermark somewhere else. And I've watched this through a couple of times and you can see the spiders are acting in a pack. It looks like there was a spiderling in trouble down at the corner of frame. It causes a lot of ruckus amongst the other spiders. This played out for a very long period of time. It was caught up in a lot of time lapse footage and from what I can see, and I hope I'm correct here, it does look like the initial spiderling that was attacked does get away. Now, I end up seeing this sort of activity going on further in the future. So possibly these redback spiders have some style of immunity to their own venom. Now I'm only thinking outside the square here. I'm not an entomologist or spider expert. But if I'm seeing spiders escaping what seems like a completely impossible situation, there's got to be something else going on. And in seeing this, this is a taste of the way this spider tank starts to bend from this point on. There's something very different about the redback spiderlings in the lower part of the spider tank. They are so different in attitude versus the spiderlings at the top. And at this point here, I still can't tell male versus female. Maybe some people with very clever eyes in my audience can work this out. I've had many people say to me, this gets revealed in a couple of weeks time. Just taking a look at the spiderlings around the metal rings up the top of the spider tank and you can see they are just chilling out. They seem to be very relaxed. They seem to be having a great party time there without trying to kill each other. But the spiders who are working at the bottom do come up to this zone because they are always setting up webs, drop down lines and doing the red back spider things that red back spiders do. A lot of these karma spiderlings could be from the second egg sac, so they may be a fair bit younger. And that was one thing I noticed was when the egg sacs did hatch, the spiderlings would hang around the egg sac area 
and they tended to be fairly passive. I didn't see any spiderling trying to take out another one. It took a couple of weeks before I started to see what I'm calling classic redback spider activity, as we see down the lower part of Spider Tank 3. There's one part of me that thinks I'm witnessing a gender divide via their attitude, but I could be totally wrong, and I probably am wrong there. There are two separate age groups going on because we've got XX6 and then a little bit later XX7 spiderlings. But I think it's very important to point out there are spiderlings in there doing basically nothing. Okay, it's lovely to focus on the ones that are going crazy, but it's very curious to see the ones that are very calm and passive as well. Now, one problem with being calm and passive is pretty soon you're going to start to get hungry and there's only one way to get a meal here. This next piece of footage is down the bottom part of the tank where the red back spiderlings are a little bit nastier. It's a spiderling feeding on another spiderling. I dare say the one that's feeding is female. Sometimes when the spiderlings are feeding, other spiderlings will come along and try to take advantage of something that's being caught and captured by another spider. In this case, it wasn't the case. Other spiderlings didn't come down and try to hitchhike a feed from something that was caught by this spider. I have compressed the time here a lot. This feeding time went on for a lengthy period of time and you may notice there's other smaller bugs in the tank here. They were there from the start of the tank and I do open up the tank to take boroscope video and also clean the glass and I can't stop small critters from wanting to jump inside this glass tank full of deadly redback spiderlings. All I know is that whatever jumps inside the tank here doesn't live for very long. It's in a tank full of deadly spiders and when the spider has stopped feeding it will just dump the carcass of what it's been feeding from onto the bottom of the spider tank and gradually the bottom of the spider tank is being peppered with dead redback spiderlings. This next piece of video is very typical of the way the redback spiderlings in the lower part of the tank have set up their zones. There's a cloud of very fine web set not too far off the base of the spider tank here and these spiderlings will tease each other all the time by crossing over into each other's territory. And in the next clip we'll see why this is the most dangerous part of the spider tank. The next segment's fairly complicated and it's fairly deadly. I'll put a red circle so you know where to see the action and I'll zoom in on what's going on. And I've looked at this many times over. I have tried to slow it up as much as I possibly can to make sense of what's going on. And it looks like there is a spiderling who's captured another spiderling. And another spiderling decides, hey, well, I can't capture anything, but I'm going to take advantage of somebody else's meal. Although things happen so fast here, it's like watching a magician who's got those balls under the cup and they swish the cups around and you need to understand where the ball is. And when I witnessed this, I thought... Maybe the smart move in the spider tank is don't do the risky thing by capturing little brother or sister. Just come along and try to steal a meal that another spider has taken the risk in capturing. But I think what was very interesting here is that this happened in a blink of an eye. This started from nothing and that's very typical of what happens from here on. When the spiders turn on each other, it happens from nothing. This spider tank with spiderlings in here has got similarities to spider tank 1 and 2 which had adult redback spiders. There are times when it's very calm and quiet and nothing seems to happen for it seems like days and then all of a sudden it will snap and the spiders go manic. I'm not exactly sure what triggers this or why this happens. I suppose there's a point where the hunger pains start to kick in and unfortunately the only thing on the menu is little brother or little sister. In Spider Tank 3, if you want a meal in peace without being harassed by your brothers and sisters, often you'd see a spiderling drag another spiderling up to underneath the metal rings where there was a lot less chance of being harassed while you were having a quiet feed. Trying to feed down in the lower zone will only ever cause a feeding frenzy. It was very interesting to see the spiderlings at a very young age acting exactly the same as an adult redback spider. Here's a spiderling setting up its drop down lines, which is what it uses to nab things that would crawl across the bottom of the tank here. And in seeing this, it's saying to me that spiderling is a female redback spider. 
I don't think I've ever seen an adult male redback spider do any style of web work as you see the female redback spiders do. And once the spiderling has done all the drop down lines there, it will sit in the cloud of web which is just above it and anything that crawls in that cloud of web is going to be challenged. I did speak earlier about little critters that have snuck inside Spider Tank 3 and this is a classic case of one being captured by a spiderling. And as per usual, other spiderlings are coming in to try to take advantage of a meal that one spiderling wants to have all to itself. This style of feeding frenzy is very much the way the spiderlings at the lower part of the tank operate time after time. There's only been a couple of bugs and critters that have crept into Spider Tank 3 and it must be a complete delicacy not to have little brother or sister on the plate. As we're looking in Spider Tank 3 in this episode, which is the third episode, the spiderlings are nearly four weeks old. Spider Tank 3 episodes are bound by when the SD card in the camera is full and it tends to be about 10 or 11 days when the SD card becomes full. Because this is a delayed upload, it's also a very delayed edit, I can see into the future by another couple of weeks and I can tell you something that goes on in here. Spider Tank 3 hits a tipping point where all of a sudden there's only a few spiderlings left. Mind you, we have egg sac 10 and 11 opening up in the coming weeks. But honestly, I feel those new spiderlings will just become a meal for the few dominant spiders left inside the spider tank. One thing that I do know is that the dominant spiderlings in the future are the ones that are hanging out in this lower part of the tank. As we're looking here at the lower part of the tank, I dare say the dominant spiderlings from the future are down here now. But at the moment it's not very clear because we really can't see one that's a little bit bigger than another one yet. And as the days roll on in Spider Tank 3, of course we see a spiderling eating another spiderling and that's the only way to survive in this spider tank. I think the thing that I find most interesting is when you see other spiders who didn't actually capture a spider come in and get a free meal. And that actually happens a lot, although I can't capture every time that happens because the area of focus that I look at and the part of the tank is often much smaller than the complete tank. The only controlling factor I have over these spiderlings is using one light and I know the spiderlings are attracted to light and even that's curious to me because I know when these spiders are adults they are attracted to dark recluse areas. I have this saying and it relates back to a TV series called Terror Hawks. Expect the unexpected and that's very much the way Spider Tank 3 plays out. It's really strange, there are some spiderlings in here which seem to be, in essence, dead in the water versus the other very, very crazy active ones that are doing all of the rounding up, as I'll say it, without using another word. And maybe the most spectacular thing that happened in this time frame, that's between the 1st of November to the 10th of November, in the last few days of this episode, on the 8th of November, Egg Sack 8 hatched, and of course that was one of Barbie the Redback Spider's egg sacs. Now there was a video where I showed a swap out of empty egg sacs and I put egg sac 10 and 11 in there but of course those uploads are put up just prior to the US election. The Redback Spider egg sac swap out upload was put up on the 31st of October, that's Halloween. And the other video was actually about a rain event we had and also spoke about shadow banning, it was put up on November 1st both those videos are completely dead ducks. Now, the one where I swapped out the XX is actually very important to the story of Spider Tank 3 and also to the story of Barbie the Redback Spider when she passed away a few days after this event. And with these two videos shot down in flames from being uploaded just prior to the US election, it leaves a great big hole in the story. And I see so often people laying in comments, well, what happened here? When did this happen and what's changed this? We didn't see this happening because these people were never served these videos. It's very clear to me what's going on. And then I ask myself, well, if my channel's being silenced just prior to the US election, mind you, I'm not an American, I'm an Australian, although YouTube will sense that I've got a big voice in middle America. 
I'm very popular in Trump states. And I've always known that, and it goes right back to when I did giveaways on YouTube. I noticed the addresses I was sending to were always the states and country areas in middle America. This very curious hiding away of my uploads just prior to a US election, you can either see it in two ways. You can say, well, it's just a coincidence. It was like the butterfly in Japan flapped its wings at the wrong time. Or you could say it was by design. I've got this theory and I was speaking to some other people online via YouTube channels about what was going on. And maybe YouTube were quieting down channels that had an influence in middle America. I'd be one of them, although I'm a foreign channel. And they were allowing other channels who had a certain message to be seen and easily found during that very critical time before a US election. YouTube has also been fairly buggy in the lead up to the election. There was also a very large typhoon in the Philippines and that can affect the way the internet works via those undersea cables. But having the rug pulled out from under your channel just prior to a US election, I don't know, that's got a certain smell to it in my mind. Also notice I didn't do a Halloween video this year. You know why? Because 9 times out of 10, your Halloween video will be demonetized. Welcome to YouTube 2020. On a much brighter note, let me show you something that I see in the next episode because I'll need your help to help me understand what's going on. We start to see the gender divide in the spiders in the next episode and I start to see what looks like male and female spiders playing together. It was exciting footage to catch. Normally when the spiders are this close, they're trying to eat each other, but there seems to be something else going on here. And I'm sure there's going to be some wonderful spider experts which watch my spider videos who are going to nail exactly what they see here. Because we'd all like to know. I just hope what I captured is G-rated. Because I'd hate to send YouTube into a silly tailspin. I've actually got a bonus bonus to show you in episode 3 here. I can show you something into the future which would be seen in episode 5. It's something that happens in the last week of November 2020. And I was very lucky to notice a black house spider egg sac which was opening up. And I thought I'll grab that and I'll add this to Spider Tank 3. Of course, I already tried to put one of these egg sacs into the start of Spider Tank 3. That egg sac had totally failed. But this one is not a failure. I can see there are some amazing Black House Spider spidlings scampering about this egg sac. Black House Spiders will naturally prey on Redback Spiders. Now, one thing I know is if you've got Black House Spiders around, you will not see a Redback anywhere near where the Black House Spiders live. Although, in my mind, where the Black House Spiders live is in a different zone versus Redback Spiders. Adding these Black House Spider Spidlings is going to totally change the dynamic inside Spider Tank 3. We may end up with a totally different result once these spiders start to sort each other out. The only complication for the Black House Spider Spidlings is there are some fairly established Redback Spiders in Spider Tank 3 and they would be getting up to being about 6 weeks old at this point of the Spider Tank. And for these Redbacks to still be alive at this point, they have made all the right moves so far. As I can see very clearly in Spider Tank 3, if you make one wrong move, it's going to be one of the last moves you ever make. I have been crying about two videos that completely failed at upload. And you can see on this data here that the videos on October 31 and November 1 went nowhere versus the videos around them. As I said earlier, there were people laying in comments explaining to me, hey Leo, there were some major typhoons that went through parts of the Pacific just prior to the US election. In fact, there was a bit of a stack up and overlap of very large storms in this part of the year during 2020. In Australia, we've heard nothing about these storms. All we hear about is either the virus or at this time of the year, all we were hearing about was the US election. Typhoon Malawi was one storm. It was a Category 3 and it was between the dates of October 23rd to 29. It would have been a nasty thing to be near, but the really big damaging one 
was Typhoon Goni. It was a Category 5. It's classified as a Super Typhoon. It went right through the middle of the Philippines, and it was between the dates of October 26th to November 6th. Typhoon Goni was the sixth costliest typhoon, costing a staggering $368 million US dollars in damage. I'll have the Wikipedia links about these storms in the info area of this video, but if I've got any friends who watch my videos in the Philippines, crikeys, you've been hit hard, and very sadly, we heard nothing about this in Australia because we've been under the fog of other news. So maybe the butterfly that flapped its wings in Japan was actually a Category 5 typhoon that went right through the middle of the Philippines. I'm certainly aware that large typhoons can heavily disrupt internet traffic around the world and Typhoon Goni is right at the time where my videos fell off the internet. I certainly know I have viewers in the Philippines and I hope you got through that last typhoon okay. Let me know how you went if you've watched up to this part of the video.